In the icy waters of Antarctica, scientists use a method unchanged in a hundred years to catch and study plankton, but in their fine meshed net, they now also find a 21st century threat. I think we might have a surprise in here. There's something bright green. It's hard plastic, perhaps part of a bottle cap, slowly degrading as it drifts on the current in the most isolated and pristine place on the planet. It's not only where lots of people live, it's in remote, pristine places. It gets everywhere um, with global currents, ocean currents, it gets distributed. Um, and yeah, it's, you can find it even here in such remote places in Antarctica. British Antarctic Survey's ship, the James Clark Ross, is a floating laboratory. On board is another scientist trying to quantify for the first time the amount of microplastic in the fjords. It's there, in every liter of seawater, that she carefully filters. Right there is a fiber. There's a couple of fragments in the middle and more fibers over here. Under the microscope, there are even more. Lots more of plastic than I was expecting to see. Um, so far, it's easily in the hundreds per liter of water, which is very sad because the locations we're looking at are new habitats. They're essentially pristine, untouched. Most of the places we're at are actually unsurveyed. Um, so you wouldn't expect to see a bunch of human influence, but so far there definitely has been. Plastic is rapidly increasing in the South Atlantic, and scientists believe it's coming Antarctica's way. Antarctica's marine creatures like this tiny crustacean are already having to deal with rapid climate change, warming seas, disappearing sea ice and strengthening winds. But the appearance of so much plastic so quickly is putting them under new stress. The question is, if it gets into the food chain, can they cope? This marine ecologist says cold water creatures may take three weeks to finish a meal, so it has to be nutritious. If most of that meal is full up of um, little plastic fragments, tiny, tiny um, microplastics and even smaller, then they've wasted most of that time processing the meal for something that not only isn't going to give them anything, but worse still, it fills up their stomach so they've got less to put in next time. So really quite bad. This is the last wild place on the planet, barely touched by humans, but it's no longer remote enough to escape the plastic tide. Thomas Moore, Sky News, Antarctica.